Hello everyone, this is The Final Bossman, and on today's episode, Next Gen Attacks Japan. Let's get started. Welcome to the show, I am Kyle Bossman, and if my eyes seem especially baggy today, it's because I was up late last night watching Sony's press conference in Japan and then had to write a whole episode response to it. Uh, but here it is, here are my big four takeaways from Sony's Japanese press conference. Takeaway number one, I'm glad I got to watch this. This press conference was streamed both in, in Japanese and in English. Uh, it, English was it, translators, uh, translating live everything that was being said. Historically, that's kind of unprecedented. We're not normally given access to Japanese press conferences, uh, at least translated. So I think that sort of speaks to where this industry is going, uh, at more global, more, more communicative. Sony of Japan, uh, leading up to this event, said, uh, you know, a lot of this won't apply to North America, and we're not sure that you'll care, but we're gonna stream it anyway, just to see if you're if you're interested. And I think we proved we were, and that we do care, even though some of those games, yeah, might not come to the U.S. or, or whichever country you live in. Uh, it's still interesting to watch these press conferences, and it did turn out there was some big news involved. Uh, so, uh, Sony, thank you for streaming that event. Also, without translators, translating a, a Japanese press conference, we would never have something so beautiful as this moment. They are our enemies and we cannot stop until we annihilate the mankind. Everything here belongs to me. Well, I hope, but you are stronger than you look. Takeaway number two, Sony still believes in Vita. Uh, so, this event started, kicked off with the, the announcement that the PlayStation Vita would be redesigned slightly uh, and would come in six colors, so take that, Apple. Beat you by a few days. And then it ended with the announcement of a whole new product, which is the PS Vita TV. And what this thing does, it allows you to play apps on your TV and plays your you can play Vita games on your TV and and PlayStation 1 games you can download and play on your TV all all from this little box. Essentially it's Sony's Roku. It, it is Sony's Apple TV. It's it's part of that whole initiative of a small little box that costs around $100. This big initiative is is attached to that brand which hasn't necessarily meant success for the company. And so uh, I don't know if it's going to be the name that's used in the US for this product, but it certainly is in Japan. And, and for that reason, I, I kind of admire Sony's stick to about this. Uh, good luck. Takeaway number three, Sony may be taking Japan for granted. The release date for the, the PlayStation 4 was basically known across the world, all except for Japan, leading into this press conference, and it was finally announced. And the release date of the PlayStation 4 in Japan is February 22nd. 2014, which is like three months after the rest of the world. Well, not the rest of the world, but the other 32 countries. That's crazy. Historically, PlayStation's launched first in Japan and then everywhere else. Japan's like the home team, so that's different. That's that's uh, that's brutal. And Hiroshi Kawano, who is the president of Sony Computer Entertainment of Japan, when he announced that release date, he kind of at least was acknowledging that it's a little rough. And he said, well, it's that late because we wanted to have a good launch lineup. We wanted to develop enough games so that when it does launch, it has some great games available for it. And I mean, yes, the, the, the PlayStation 4 launch in Japan will have a better launch lineup. But I don't know, if I could play Michael Pachter for a second, I, I think the real reason is pretty simple. It's all about console dispersion. Uh, the manufacturing of PlayStation 4 is, is it's still finite. You know, you only have so many millions of consoles you can have uh, at launch. And so, basically, those are your soldiers in this console war. <laughs> Sorry about that phrase. Uh, console war, I kind of dislike it. It's like we've, we've created console war, so you click on things. Anyway, uh, y your units, your PlayStation 4s are your soldiers. And so why would you send any soldiers to Japan where you have basically a guaranteed win? Japan's already... <laughs> You got that. Microsoft's sending nobody to Japan. Don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, that's why you have to, I guess, attack the U.S. first, because that's where Microsoft is strongest. So attack them first, and then you move to Europe, and then Latin America. It's all about just 
moving your units. And so Japan's saying, oh, it's just, that's okay, I'll be patient. And Sony just says, yeah, you will. In the meantime, I gotta send all these consoles to El Salvador. <laughs> I love you, I will wait for you. Shut up, Guatemala needs more consoles. Poor Japan, and I, I mean, so I can't say it's dumb. I, it's probably the smartest way to do your business, but if you live in Japan, I feel for you. That's gonna be a tough wait. Takeaway number four, press conferences are different in Japan. <laughs> that, sorry that seems obvious, but uh, different in interesting ways. Uh, this press conference is sort of unlike other press conferences I'm used to. So uh, this takeaway is actually a list. It is a list within a list. Oh God. Oh no. Uh, so, uh, takeaway number four is a list. This is a list of reasons why uh, I think uh, Japanese press conferences are unique. Uh, number one, uh, they don't applaud for games, uh, only people. That was an interesting thing. It's like when a game is announced, uh, there's no like, ah, ah, ah. it's kind of just everyone's quiet. And then when a person walks on stage or off stage, there is applause for that person. And then a uh, second big difference uh, was I loved the way that it opened. I loved the way that Hiroshi Kamano kind of walks out uh, and uh, just doesn't make a big deal of it. You know, he walks out of these cool futuristic doors and I'm expecting someone to kind of like walk out and just be like, hey everybody, here I am. <laughs> but he just kind of walks out and just like, okay, let's get into it, let's do this. And it's like, whoa, it's so smooth. Number three, montage music is way different. Uh, <laughs> I think we can hear a little bit of it. This is the type of music that they, they picked for their montages, which I think is in stark contrast to the types of montage music we see at Sony during E3, uh, which is just, I don't know, always that song. To me, it's always that song that goes, tick, 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 boom. That song, always. It's like one out of three songs, tick, tick, da 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 Stop it, stop using that song. If you're an editor, just like delete it. Just delete that song, don't use that anymore. Anyway, uh, less aggressive, uh, interesting in that manner. And the fourth difference, no exclusive DLC announcements. What kind of nonsense is this? How are you supposed to have a press conference without talking about exclusive content? Oh wait, there's that hacking boost again. Phew. I was, I was scared that we were about to have a whole press conference without any exclusive content announcements. Anyway, that is that is the episode uh, for this week. But uh, back to takeaway number one. Uh, I'm so grateful that we were able to watch that. I hope in the future, more Japanese companies feel comfortable giving us translated versions of their press conferences because uh, that was fun. I didn't understand everything that was happening, but I always appreciated uh, just uh, uh, being there and sitting there and being able to watch all of that. Uh, anyway, if you're on Twitter, you can find me at Kyle Bossman. I will be here next week. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. All right, I think we got that song nailed down. Let's start working on our other stuff. Wait, hold, hold on, what do you mean other stuff? Oh, well, there are our other gigs, man. I'm looking at our schedule. Uh, we have that house party coming up, and then next weekend is my cousin's ninth birthday party. Hold on, I, are, are you serious? So I, 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 I kind of think we should just be Working on the battle of the bands, it might be more important. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? How can you say that? I, I, I just think we should be probably focusing on the battle of the bands right now, and, and maybe those other things later. Dude, 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 dude. I, I think you're just not looking at the bigger picture here. That house party? My cousin's ninth birthday, those are, they're all part of the same path on our path skyrocketing up into stardom, man. No, I, I don't think it is. I, I don't think we need those gigs right now. Oh, I get it. This guy's being a little sissy. Shut up, I'm not being a sissy. Yeah, looks like you're some kind of wussy boy. What is that? I'm not a, I'm not a wussy boy. Okay, 
Sure, it looks like you're being a little weirdo. I'm not a, I'm not a weirdo, that doesn't even hurt my feelings. Fine, okay, we'll just go without you. More free pizza for us. So? Yeah, and I heard that Marcel Bartoni is gonna be there. Marcel Bartoni? Yeah, and it's a pool party, so Marcel Bartoni is gonna be in a bikini. Marcel Bartoni in a bikini? Yeah, and his cousin also has a cool dog. Cool dog? I love cool dogs. Guys, I'm in!